So we are going to prove that every number with a repeating decimal must be rational in any base. Now in order to do that, we're going to start with base 10, but we can extend the logic that we use in this proof to any base. I'm also going to go through every step with an example just so that we can visualize what's going on. To start off, let's say we have a number x which has a repeating decimal. In this case, we have 12.359, and then this 67 with a bar over it means that this is the same as 359.676767 all the way to infinity. We can split up this number into three different parts. The first part is the integer, which I'll call n, at the beginning of the number here in front of the decimal point. So that'll be 12 for our example. After that, we'll have some terminating part t. That's the part that doesn't repeat in the decimal expansion. So in this case, we have 0 0.359. And then after that, we have the part we're really interested in, r, which is the repeating decimal part. In this case, that's going to be 0 0.000067 repeating. So in this case, the zeros are terminating and it's just the 676767 going on forever. From here, all we need to do is show that each of these three terms is a rational number because the rational numbers are closed under addition, which means one rational number plus another rational number must give us a rational result. In this case, we already know that n must be a rational number because it's an integer. In this case, 12 is just 12 over 1. Every integer is a rational number. Now when we take a look at this terminating decimal part, 0 0.359, notice that we can write 0 0.359 as 359 times 10 to the negative 3. If we multiply by 10 to the negative 3, that has the effect of taking our number 359 and shifting the decimal place over three times. So we get 0 0.359 as the result. Each of these is a rational number, and therefore 0 0.359 must be rational as well. For a general terminating decimal, we can write that as 10 to the negative LT times NT. In this case, LT is the length of our terminating decimal. The length of 359 was 3 because we had three digits. So for a general terminating decimal t, it'll have a length l sub t. And n sub t is just the digits in that decimal. In this case, 0.359, nt was 359. Now finally, we have to look at the repeating part. And that's going to be the most difficult. But now that we've isolated it by itself, we're going to have a little easier time dealing with it. For the repeating decimal, let's try the same trick that we did with the terminating decimal. Namely, that we want to write this as 67.67 repeating times 10 to the negative of some value. In this case, if we want to get from 67 all the way over to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places down, we need to multiply by 10 to the negative 5. So we know that for our repeating decimal in general, we're going to need to multiply by 10 to the negative something. We'll just call it k, so that we shift the number over until it starts to the left of the decimal place. From here, we want to multiply this by something. For the terminating decimal, that something that we multiplied was just those digits, 3, 5, 9. But in this case, we still have an infinite number of decimal places. So we need to do a little more work to figure out what goes here. Let's think about what is 67.67 repeating. Well, one way that we can express this is as 67 plus 0.67 plus 0.0067 plus 0 0.00067 and so on. If we can write this with sigma notation so that we get one nice sum, then we can do some calculations on it to figure out what exactly it equals. So let's see if we can write this in a nice compact form. First of all, we know that we could factor out a 67 from each of these terms. So in each case, 
we're factoring out the 67, and we're left with some power of 10. So we can write this as 67 times the sum from let's say m equals 0 to infinity of, what are we adding up in each of these terms? Well first we had 1, and then we had 0 0.01, and then we had 0 0.0001. How are we getting from each term to the next? Well, we know that 1 is 10 to the 0. 0 0.01, that's 10 to the negative 2. 0 0.0001, that's 10 to the negative 4. So each time we go from one term to the next, we're going to multiply by 10 to the negative 2. And that makes sense because multiplying by 10 to the negative 2 means we shift the decimal two places over. So we get our repeating decimal expansion. Therefore, our sum is going to be from m equals 0 to infinity of 10 to the negative 2 times m, or equivalently 10 to the negative 2 to the power of m. This is an infinite geometric series, which means that we can evaluate it with the methods that we know. This geometric series must equal 1 over 1 minus the common ratio r. And in this case, the common ratio is 10 to the negative 2. So that's what our repeating decimal expansion looks like for 0 0.00067 repeating. How can we take this and write it for an arbitrary repeating decimal? All we have to do to answer that question is take all of the cases with 67 and replace it with the arbitrary number n sub r, the digits of the repeating decimal. And then if we keep writing out what we have here, we'll have the sum from m equals 0 to infinity of 10 to the negative something to the power of m. Remember that 10 to the negative 2, we chose the number 2 there because the length of 6, 7 is 2. 6, 7 has two digits. For an arbitrary repeating decimal, it's going to have some length L sub r. And every time we add another instance of that repeating sequence, it's going to be shifted over L sub r places to the right. So we multiply by 10 to the negative L sub r. And just like before, at the end here we have a geometric series. And therefore we can evaluate this as 10 to the negative k times our repeating decimal digits n sub r times 1 over 1 minus that common ratio 10 to the negative l sub r. So this is one way we can express our number with a repeating decimal x. We can add up first the original integer n to the left of the decimal place, plus 10 to the negative l sub t times n sub t, that's the terminating decimal part, and then plus this part here, which represents the evaluation of a geometric series, where we add up every single instance of that repeating decimal sequence. Now the important thing to notice here is that every part of this expression is a rational number. n, l sub t, n sub t, k, n sub r, and l sub r. Those are all integers. Every single variable in this expression here is an integer. And therefore, when we do 10 to the negative some integer, that's going to be rational. When we multiply two rational numbers, that's also rational. And when we divide two rational numbers, as long as the denominator is not zero, and it isn't because we know a repeating decimal must have length of at least one, this is rational as well. Therefore, every single element in this expression here is rational, and x must be rational as a result. And the final thing to note here is that all of the steps that we just did with that proof generalize not just to a base 10 number, but to any number of an integer base b. And we do that by splitting up the repeating and non-repeating parts and evaluating this geometric series.